Yes, we have talked about semiconductors in the previous module. However, we will try to dig deeper in this module. So semiconductor devices are neither insulators nor conductors. So we did talk about this earlier. And the silicon is one of the most uh, important semiconductor materials and which is often used for building electronic uh, components. So the reason is the reason being because like we do have like other semiconductor materials such as um, uh, germanium and uh, selenium so these are semiconductor materials as well however they are not as abundantly available as silicon so silicon has 14 valen uh, 14 electrons and uh, the four uh, the most important thing is the four outermost electrons in the valence shell so these four valence electron, so in if you consider like a silicon uh, wafer um, and these four electrons in the silicon atom makes um, covalent bonds with uh, other silicon atoms uh, that are uh, present nearby actually. So if you consider um, a silicon uh, a wafer they are not a conductor because we don't have uh, enough free electrons actually. So what shall we do about that? So we talked about doping. I'm not sure whether we talked about doping earlier, but again, doping is an important part. So doping, um, as its name suggests, like to increase the performance of the semiconductor devices, like we are adding something to it. Like we are, um, like steroids, we are adding something to it like to make it like much more active and like say, do something for us. So here we have uh, to know about uh, two, um, uh, uh, two, two materials that are often like doped with uh, semiconductor devices. So one is phosphorus and like the other one is boron. So phosphorus is a um, pentavalent, so which means you have five valence electron on the outermost shell. So we have a pentavalent electron, uh, sorry, a pentavalent um, atom. And then we also have a uh, trivalent, so which means that you have three uh, atoms in the outermost shell. So we have a trivalent atom, which is boron. So what do we do is like we dope them, uh, dope the silicon conductor with uh, phosphorus and uh, boron. So when we dope with phosphorus, what happens is you know that like the silicon has like four electrons on the outermost shell and the four electrons make covalent bond with the phosphorus atom but like however there is like one more electron that is present in uh, the phosphorus atom and this is what say an extra electron like that is available as free electrons for the conduction process so this type of conductor because it has an additional negative charge we call it a n type conductor so let's do the same. Let's dope the um, uh, let's dope the silicon with boron now because it is a pentavalent uh, atom. Uh, oh, sorry, because it is a trivalent atom. My apologies. Because it is a trivalent atom. Um, so the three valence electron makes bonds with uh, the silicon atoms, and one where we don't have an electron we call it a hole so hole is a lack of electron so at that point of time it becomes like a positive charge so that's why we call it a p-type semiconductors although we call an n-type and p-type and like a negative charge and a positive charge these are neutral so the n-type semiconductor and p-type semiconductors are neutral so when we say uh, they are neutral, the number of uh, protons and number of electrons in this uh, uh, at uh, in this substrate, we can call it a substrate. Uh, if it is the same, then we call it neutral. In this case, both are neutral. However, like say here, we have one electron like that is readily available for conduction. So and here we have a lack of electron which can accept an electron. So that is also available. So this is what makes it, although they are neutral, this is this has more electrons and this has less electrons. So that is 
what doping does to a semiconductor. So with a uh, P-type P, uh, P layer and an N-type layer, we can make a very simple semiconductor device called a diode. So you just need a P-type uh, uh, material and N-type material and then just connect them. So when you do that, uh, you create a PN junction diode and this junction PN junction diode is often used as rectifiers. So rectifier or like the rectification is the process of converting alternating current into direct current and we will see the applications towards the end of this module. But for now, let's dig deeper into what is a PN junction and what happens there. So when you have a p-type layer and like an n-type layer and when you make a junction so what happens is like you know that like you have more electrons here and we need more electrons here we have more holes so what happens is like say the electrons um, from the n-type layer move into the p-type layer so once that happens if you see this will be all positive charge because the atoms themselves can't move. The electrons can easily move. The atoms themselves can't move. But here, they, they have a lack of electrons, actually. So this becomes a positive charge. And on this side, they have gained an electron and they become uh, negatively charged. So what happens is these negative charged, uh, negatively charged um, or like uh, ionized atoms they kind of ripple other uh, n-type uh, or like say other electrons from the n-type and uh, the positively charged uh, atoms here they uh, kind of push they don't have to push though but like still they kind of uh, keep uh, this area uh, uh, kind of like what is a uh, away from away from other like holes actually so when this happens uh, you have a region developed here this is called the depletion region so this acts as a barrier for the electrons to flow through these uh, regions okay so that's when when you add at this point of time like yes you have the depletion region and that's it like nothing else happens so you have still you have like more electrons here and more holes here but like because of this depletion region nothing happens but what happens when you apply a potential when you connect a battery okay so there are two types so when you connect the p type with the positive and n type with the negative it is called a forward bias and if you do it the other way around it is called called the reverse bias so what happens when you apply a forward bias or like when you apply increasing potential so you have the negative terminal connected to the n and then like what happens is this these electrons here from the battery like push the electrons further and further Okay, so and like the depletion region gets smaller and smaller and once you receive there's a number which is like very very important like it is 0.7 so if you apply a voltage greater than 0.7 so that is like more than enough to kind of push these and like reduce like say uh, reduce the depletion region and like make this uh, conductor like say make this uh, diode conducting so if you apply any voltage greater than 0.7 this will reduce the depletion region and start conducting and like this is what will happen so uh, there will be like a very small connection and like say the voltage will easily overcome that and then the current starts flowing until that if you apply okay maybe let's go to the next slide to understand what happens if you reverse bias them so if you reverse bias then what happens is like you have positive so you have electrons when you have positive so we know what happens to unlike charges so you have more positive charge here all the electrons are going to be attracted to the positive so when that happens the depletion region grows wider and wider and wider okay so this happens again like this happens for uh, it can happen like until like a 
very high voltage at which point of time it will break down so um, that is like really high again uh, in the range of like 40 volts so if you apply like 40 to 50 volts to a diode and then a reverse biased it will conduct but like a very high current will flow through it and then like right after that like it will explode so that will that is what will happen and like we should never operate like at that high voltage so when you reverse bias like a very less current still like a very small current might flow but again like it will be in microampias like very small uh, current will flow through this but it is technically if you consider an ideal diode it will be turned off so in reverse bias it will be turned off in forward bias it will be turned on and in forward bias only if the voltage is greater than 0.7 volts it will be turned on if not it will be turned off okay so that is the voltage or like the potential required to overcome the um, uh, depletion region or we call it like the potential barrier so here is the vi characteristics i was talking about um, so we often use silicon diode so that's why it's 0.7 as i said the point at which uh, the depletion region like kind of like uh, becomes negligible is this 0.7 volts for germanium it's like 0.3 volt but like we will not find i've never used a germanium uh, diode uh, so i don't think uh, i'm not sure whether they're available so just let me put it that way um and 0.7 uh, is the um, is the voltage uh, that is required for silicon diodes to be forward biased and like to be conducting uh, and in reverse bias so this is uh, not uh, the right scale uh, it's not like very close it has to be 40 so technically it'll be like this for a long time and then like it'll go down so a very small leakage current will flow through but like it takes like negative 40 volts or something for it to disappear and diodes when we talk about diodes yes these are uh, diodes as well these are light emitting diodes so all the tvs are predominantly made with these light emitting diodes so what happens here is uh, when we uh, energize the semiconductor devices so the electrons move from the conduction to valence band okay and in a regular diode like what happens is like when the electron moves back again from the valence band to the conduction band it, it loses its energy in the form of heat so that's why we said like say in most of the electronic components like say the energy that is lost is heat uh, and usually that is what happens in a regular diode it gets heats, uh, heated up but in a light emitting diode like when you apply a potential so the uh, electrons that moves uh, by absorbing the electrical energy and moves from the conduction band to the valence band when they drop back from the valence band to the conduction band it lets that energy as photons so that photons is what we see as light okay so um, the wavelength actually depends on the distance or like the band gap between the um, valence band and the conduction band like how much energy it requires to move from the conduction band to the valence band and like that depends on like what type of material it is made up of like say gallium arsenic and phosphorus like those are the materials like that you can use and uh, so you you have the uh, particular uh, wave uh, or like the energy uh, band gap and based on that energy band gap like the color is going to be either yellow red or like any other color like it could also be invisible uh, we have infrared say the remotes like that you use right now is all infrared we can't see it but like the tv can see it but still those are uh, produced by leds so we talked about diodes in the next module we will talk about uh, uh, transistors uh, that's another uh, important semiconductor device and after that like we will uh, do more problems on the diodes as well like we'll do more of applications uh, and tinkercad okay so see you in the next uh, subsection